The legend lives on from the Chippewa on down Of the big lake they call Gitchagumi The lake, it is said, never gives up her dead When the skies of November turn gloomy With a load of iron ore, 26,000 tons more Than the Edmund Fitzgerald weighed empty That good ship and true was a bone to be chewed When the gales of November came early The ship was the pride of the American side Coming back from some mill in Wisconsin As the big freighters go, it was bigger than most With a crew and good captain well seasoned Concluding some terms with a couple of steel firms When they left fully loaded for Cleveland Then later that night when the ship's bell rang Could it be the north wind they'd been feeling? All Lake Superior, what the Native Americans call Gitchigumi, and a place where shipping is the main way of getting from one side to another. And no ship is this more well known in than the SS Edmund Fitzgerald. The Edmund Fitzgerald was laid down on August 7, 1957, launched on June 7th of the following year, and christened on that same date. Her maiden voyage was on September 24th, 1958, where she was under the helm of Captain McSorley, who would remain to in command until her sinking on um, November 10th, 1975. Around that fateful evening, McSorley and the other 28 crew members aboard the SS Edmund Fitzgerald would meet a watery fate. Why did this happen? Well, no one really knows for sure. People have, have been debating this for years, from historians to ship mariners and to anyone in between. The three main theories as to why the SS Edmund Fitzgerald sunk when she did on that fateful November night range from the absurd, like a bomb or government intervention, to reasonable ones, like bottoming out, capsizing, or striking a rock. This the mystery deepens when people realize that the Edmund Fitzgerald wasn't the only ship in that bloody storm on that poor, poor November evening. Another ship, the SS Arthur M. Anderson, a larger ship, was floating just behind the Fitzgerald and was maintaining almost constant radio contact between the Anderson and the Fitzgerald's captain, Ernest McSorley. One of the last messages that McSorley gave out to any ship was to the Anderson. His message, we're holding our own. This was in response to the first officer of the Anderson asking him how the ship was holding, while well, he stated earlier that his pumps had failed and water had been entering the ship, causing the ship to develop a list. Now, another thing to note is earlier in the evening, McSorley had reported that not only had he lost his navigation lights, but he had also lost his radio transponder towards the shore, as well as his navigation and radar systems. This is incredibly bad, because during a storm amongst rocky shoals like they were, it is incredibly hard to see at night during a gale. This wouldn't have been as bad, however, because a lighthouse on the shore should have been able to show them the way to Whitefish Point. However, the storm had knocked out this light, and the emergency backup generator designed to keep the light functioning in this situation never kicked in. So with his navigation systems down, and no light from the lighthouse to guide him, Captain McSorley relied heavily on the other ships in the area, including a Swedish ship and, as pre-mentioned, the Arthur M. Anderson. He used these ships to, in a way, triangulate his position and leapfrog over them at their different locations to find his way to the port. This idea worked well for Captain McSorley, until, of course, 7 o'clock p.m. on that fateful November evening, when Captain McSorley sent the final message that the ASS Edmund Fitzgerald would ever send to the first officer of the Arthur M. Anderson, stating the aforementioned message, We're holding our own. From then on, it was just silence, and two minutes later at 7.02 p.m., the Arthur M. Anderson lost the Fitzgerald from their radar scope, and the Fitzgerald was not seen again. Now, at the beginning, the Anderson wasn't quite sure what had happened to the ship. Had it simply entered a radio dead zone, or had the ship broken apart and sunk? The Anthem Anderson continued its way towards the Whitefish Point and the protection, while another ship that had already been anchored there, the William Clay Ford, was ordered by the Coast Guard to go back out into the sea to assist in helping to track down the Fitzgerald. The captain of the William Clay Ford was hesitant at first, but reluctantly decided eventually to go back out into the sea. 
It wasn't until the following morning when the Coast Guard was able to launch a proper search and rescue mission to attempt to find the crew of the Evan Fitzgerald. Unfortunately, no survivors were ever found. However, a lifeboat was found broken up and crashed against the shore two days later. Five days later, a Coast Guard ship armed with sonar located the Edmund Fitzgerald wreck just 15 miles from Whitefish Point. Only 15 miles from safety. Though the Fitzgerald was gone and her crewmen never found again, alive or dead, the legacy of the Fitzgerald lives on today because in 1977, Canadian singer and songwriter Gordon Lightfoot created a song known as The Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. This six and a half minute tune was listened to by millions and is today remains one of the best songs about any shipwreck in history. The loss of Fitzgerald also prompted many new changes in regulations and in the way that cargo ships operate today. For example, crews are now more tightly watched and monitored during the tightening of hatch clamps, and captains have received more accurate charts and backup generators for loss of navigation systems. Lighthouses have also received additional systems to help prevent losses of emergency generators and power, such as the situation that happened on that November frosty, frosty November night. The wind and the wires made a tattletale sound And the wave broke over the railing And every man knew as the captain did too T'was the witch of November come stealing The dawn came late and the breakfast had to wait When the gales of November came slashing when afternoon came, it was freezing rain In the face of a hurricane west wind 